Right, welcome back to Lawrence McKenna on LFC Channel. Sorry, this is a little bit different to normal, but we're in a car on our way back from Anfield after watching Liverpool possibly get robbed, but possibly also dominate City in a way that I think most people didn't really expect this season or to see Liverpool do in the Klopp era again. So let's talk a little bit about that, break that down, and why Liverpool probably deserved a little bit more out of this game and why City could have gotten more. If you're not already hit subscribe, hit it. And if you're not already hit the Patreon, you're more than welcome. There's also a Discord link down there. There's still loads of people in there having a chat about the game and things like that. So go take a look. What particularly made a difference today was the fact that this was the last big clash of Klopp's career against Pep and particularly at Anfield. There was all this stuff before from Trent and everyone else talking about, hey, you know, this means more. And a lot of people were kind of misinterpreting almost deliberately what it was that Trent was trying to say in order to make a point against him and kind of hoist Liverpool on their own petard. Or it's like, oh, you think everything's special here. There's a reason that you guys, you know, you love Anfield. It's only on certain nights, blah, blah, blah. And even the City fans themselves are saying things like, where's your famous atmosphere from their end? As soon as after the initial furore died down, right? Then suddenly the City fans piped up. Now, that was also, obviously, after that City goal, which completely deflated Anfield. More on that in a second. But I think that overall, Anfield and Klopp as a combo is something that we will miss come the end of the Klopp era. It's something that we will look back and go, wow, like we really made Klopp's era something special, but we were a genuine part of winning some of these games. But even Pep has admitted it post-game. And I think as much as, you know, we're I'm going to give all the players props in this match, Anfield played a massive part in this game as to overwhelming that City team, especially in the second half and bringing this Liverpool side back into it. And I'm going to tell you why. But let's first go back to the beginning of it. Liverpool did not feel their strongest team. They couldn't feel their strongest team because so many of them were injured. You've still got Trent out of that back line. Canate was obviously out. Alisson's not in this game. That midfield, I think, is actually the strongest midfield we can probably post, apart from maybe Curtis Jones in for Subasly. But even then, that's like, what kind of system you want to play? I actually think that was a great midfield. And then obviously, Salah's not starting. Obviously, it's great that Nunez starts. And obviously, you know, Diaz is kind of our preferred left-hand side right now. But actually, there are questions which I could ask. Having said that, we can get to those later. City dampened it down pretty well, but they rode out that early storm. Actually, uh, in quite a difficult fashion. There was a lot of counter-attacking. You could see from their average positions throughout the game that actually they didn't control that midfield battle. They really had a lot of possession at the back tried to get as much possession wide and up front as possible. And it, to an extent, it worked in, in that they created very explicit chances that maybe they should have, put, should have put away. And I know some people would talk about, you know, they deserve to win or whatever. Their XG was lower than Liverpool's. Now, Liverpool's XG was obviously much higher due to the penalty, the one penalty that they had. Maybe they could have had a second. But the point is, City didn't get the game the way that they wanted it. And they had to make the most of some of the scraps and some of the things that Pep engineered in the game rather than having the better of the game and Liverpool looking like, you know, the lesser side, like arguably they did against Arsenal when Arsenal absolutely ripped us just a couple of months ago. Yeah, really, this game relied on the fact that Liverpool perfectly understood what City were out there trying to do and executed perfectly. And really, as a, pretty much for about 60 minutes of this game, I'd argue that Liverpool were on top of it. You, they had the better of the uh, possession. They had the better of the passes. They had the better of the passing lanes. They had the better shape overall in the average possessions. I actually argue that they had the better opportunities on goal, even though City at the post randomly hit the bar, which wasn't really a City thing in the first place. And even then, I think the City goal that City actually scored was a really good observation from them on how to get Liverpool on set pieces and why you get a set piece coach and why that guy comes in. But if Kelleher makes a save there, it's kind of a cute little moment, but they're not going to try it again. And realistically, Liverpool are then completely aware of it. Cool. But it did put them ahead. And honestly, it did kind of deflate Anfield. You could see it kind of deflated the players for about five, ten minutes. I don't know how uh, like visible that was on TV, but ultimately it did kind of put a little bit of a pin in things for a while. And you could kind of see Liverpool needed to get back up to a certain level, need to get the momentum back. Because before that, frankly, the momentum was with Liverpool. And if we'd had people who finished in the side and we had people capable of it, then arguably I think we would have been 2-1 up at that point and probably warranted a one all going in at half time, right? If not even a 2-1 ahead. City were just trying to get the ball as wide as possible to drag Liverpool out wide, worry Gomez, worry Bradley, essentially try and pull Van Dijk and Kwanzaa apart at the back, which was obviously a big part of what they were trying to attack, and give space for Haaland to run into or some of those runners. 
The real quality out wide obviously serves City very well because then we have to worry about them. If it's wingers you don't really need to worry about, then you're less worried. But if you've got Bernardo Silva one wing and then someone like Phil Foden on the opposite wing, arguably you could make a good case that Liverpool's wide players, neither of which at the start of the season were those like starting uh, wide players in terms of, uh, you know, they would have probably started Robertson and Trent. You could say that Klopp has done a really great job of training these guys up. And I think Joe Gomez, again, deserves a massive shout out, even though Virgil van Dijk is actually the man of the match. There is a genuine, there is a genuine case to be made that Joe Gomez has been one of Liverpool's saving graces this season and covered so many positions that actually, yeah, he kind of deserves one of those like Milner-esque shouts for just being so consistent for us. And again, probably MIP for Liverpool this season. Let's go into midfield. Watarendo is so pivotal as to what's happening now. You could kind of see where Klopp was going with it at the start of the season, but I'm not sure the performances and the understanding of the rest of the team were there. Now it is there. He always knows where to look for McAllister. He always knows to look for either Elliot or whoever is out on that other wing, if not both of them. And Liverpool absolutely blow up the midfield, pack it with players, so that when he does get the ball back, there is an instant option for him straight away. And it allows Liverpool to turn things around straight away. We were arguing in this car as to whether Liverpool's press before, when they won it back as a front three, was slightly more effective, maybe felt slightly more dangerous. And maybe that's just the way it feels rather than where it actually is. And maybe it's also because Liverpool's finishing. Like, if you can get a ball through to one of Liverpool's front line and they can finish, it makes a massive difference. The finishing just was not there today. What also wasn't there was, I think, a referee who had a full handle on the game. I, we, you know, I'm, I'm not saying he particularly refereed it badly, but I think there were a couple more yellow cards that arguably could have been handed out. There's arguably a red in this match, which I think... On the balance of play, of it, I, I don't think that either team really could merit it because of the way the referee was handing out the yellows. I think City should have had at least one or two more yellows. And I want to see Liverpool playing against the City side that look a little bit more nervous. Pep made very deliberate subs, such as Kovacic coming into midfield to A, shore up the midfield, but B, also to make sure that there wasn't just a yellow card sitting out there ready to become a red. And it made a big difference. I think... Liverpool recognised that, Klopp recognised that, and they adjusted accordingly. Liverpool only made three subs in this game. And, I, you know, with Diaz out on his feet out there, and Mo Salah, Cody Akpo being two of them, and then Andy Robertson being the other one, arguably there were more. But that's where Liverpool's injury crisis, in inverted commas, kind of begins to catch up with them. And, you know, I, 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 like, I, I have this vision in my mind of one more player being able to come on. If you have a Trent in this game, if you have a Curtis Jones in the midfield, you have someone who can just come on and be legs, someone out on that left wing. I get the feeling that City are ripped. Now we can talk at the, you can talk a little bit about Lucho. I thought Lucho actually had a really good game in the second half. First half, City seemed to have him pretty much under wraps. He offered the width. He offers, and I definitely think uh, Nunez is better when he plays with Diaz. Uh, and then I think Harvey Elliott has been a player who's massively underappreciated this season, especially when it comes to covering multiple positions, trying his best to press. He and Alexis McAllister are massive press triggers for Liverpool and they make a massive difference. Just making the goalkeeper feel like he's under pressure, doing something significant is huge for Liverpool. And you can see Klopp and the rest of the players really appreciate that effort. It makes a massive difference at that because it makes Van Dijk and whoever's his centre-back partner uh, their their task a lot easier because they can win a ball out the air that's just been randomly hit rather than a ball. And ultimately, it, it gives Liverpool a lot easier chance of winning the ball back. So I think those people who don't quite understand the Harvey Elliott role just yet, it, a lot of it is something you can't really put tangibly into uh, like a, a specific role. He's doing a good job. He may be slightly on the small side for that, but that's like how are we meant to change that? We can't change the guy, guy's build. Sobasai, I think, was in and out of the game today. I think he could have been a little bit more involved. There were times where you think, oh, if he hadn't made that pass or there was a slightly earlier pass for Liverpool to make, arguably maybe that was, you're watching it on TV or you're watching it, it's way easier to do in real life. Like Salah began to offer Liverpool that a little bit more when they came on. Other players in Liverpool's formation just pushed so far down the field later on. We almost became more attacking as City became a little bit more defensive. And you could see late on, Pep's structure and all those things was really what was getting them through this game. This team were all at sea, especially in that second half. Anfield was just on top of them and they came wave after wave after wave. Arguably, we should have capitalised. Arguably, Liverpool should have won this game. Yes, Doku hit the post. Yes, they hit the bar. But the opportunities that Liverpool spurned were equally, if not even more, guilt-edged. And then there were the two penalties. First of all, Nunes very light touch, but is a penalty. And he's done the right thing in going down and making it look as dramatic as he could. you got to sell it. And the second one, I can see why they wouldn't give it. Because first of all, his touch maybe slightly nullifies the touch afterwards. But his foot is like here on the actual 
on the crest of the, of the Nike tick, right? The swoosh. So you can't say that's not high boot. But ultimately, the ball is already halfway away. There's kind of a collision rather than an actual tackle. And as much as it's dangerous play, I think you've got to be a very ballsy ref to give that. My man of the match is Virgil van Dijk, though. This guy covered every blade of grass, read every play that City were trying to make, and I think covered a lot for that Liverpool back line today. They work really well as a unit. And I think, you know, as much as there are opportunities created, as much as there were times where Keller was forced to make a save, same goes for City. Same goes for most teams in the Premier League. Ramsdale had saves to make yesterday and all those kind of things. Like, this, is, this was a big confidence builder for Liverpool. And actually, I think I'll come away with a load of positives, despite people feeling like we should have got the three points and whatever. There are still points to be dropped in this league on all three teams' parts. And I'd be really interested to know how you guys think it continues through the season. What happens with Arsenal City, especially after this result between the two? Does City try and come back stronger against Arsenal because they almost have something to prove? What do Liverpool do against the likes of Manchester United after the frustrating results earlier in the season? There's a lot still to play. There's a lot still to come. Ultimately, you can't walk away without feeling like you're robbed. And frankly, if you're going to have a draw and get a point out of it and be level on points at the top of the league, nothing is better than coming out of a game where you feel hard done by. You've dropped points against Spurs where you feel hard done by. You've dropped points against City where you feel hard done by. doesn't matter if people call you a victim or whatever it is. That's irrelevant at this point. There is a mentality that has been created in this Liverpool team which could potentially win them a Premier League. And at this point, frankly, that's all I care about this season with Glock. Winning a Premier League and trying to cement something a little bit more. I'd be interested to know what your guys' read was of the game, how the subs went. Could we have made more? I, I don't know, like, is it a Bobby Clark that's coming on? Someone like that? I think that back line, concert deserves like a whole load of credit for the casual and assured nature with which he uh, defended Haaland today. We limited Haaland. I think we limited the opportunities. We're always very good at limiting opportunities between the post. I think both Virgil and Quancy did a really good job of that. At one point, they swapped over. Very rare to see Virgil and anyone else do that. So clearly, this Liverpool team is is adapting. Clearly, this Liverpool team is reading the game. Clearly, Klopp is giving them so much more game management tools that they haven't had, maybe even just one previous season. I think all the work that we've done off the field has come to a bit of a head here. And I actually think there's a massive confidence builder for Liverpool rather than the other way around. The only thing I regret is that we didn't capitalise and make City pay in a title race where frankly, I think we kind of had to make City pay. It's, it's in Arsenal's hands now. Appreciate you guys. Chat to you later. Much love. Bye.